when <clears throat> Tanajan, uh, when someone asks, uh, says something to you, and uh, if uh, whatever that person says uh, stops there, whatever we take and make of it, whether it is getting angry or whether it is we let it go and be peaceful, is our our thing, right? It's right. we always blame the other person, but it's uh, all actually, in our, yeah. what we create. Right. It, it it's based on our like and dislike. See. When we like something, we feel good. When we, d we dislike something, we feel bad. So we react differently. But if we can get rid of our like and dislike, then we will just have no, no desire, no, no, no reaction to whatever people say emotionally. So we have got used to blaming the other person instead of looking into ourselves. Right. You have to came. get rid of your like and dislike. Yeah. And the way to do it is to have ubeka. Yeah. To have ubeka, you have to practice a lot of meditation. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the calmer your mind becomes, the, the, the more your dislike and like will disappear. Yeah. I have learned now to look at it that way and then mm. uh, uh, cut it off at that point itself and right. look you into to myself. Look, and yes. You have to look at what people do or say as like the weather. Right. You cannot control the weather, right? Yeah. You cannot tell the rain to stop or fall. Yeah. You cannot tell people to say good thing or bad thing yeah. or do good thing or bad thing. So you just watch them, just observe them. And that's all you have to, just to know what they do. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to like or dislike what they do. Mm. Yeah, I have, I have seen now, I don't have to anymore think about it. It just mm. I know how to just cut it off. So that's right. Just when you keep on doing it, it Just know, know, for, know it for what it is. Yeah. And mm. accept yeah. it for what it is. Mm. Don't have any desire for it to be different mm. than what, what it, it is. Different, yeah. Yeah. It's different. like trying to, trying to change banana into apples, you know. <laughs> Just accept banana as a banana and apple as apple, you know. Then you will have no problem with things or people. They come and go, you know. So this, the way to be able to do this, you have to have a lot of mindfulness, strong mm -hmm. mindfulness. Because yeah. strong mindfulness will make your mind become neutral, yeah. become ubeka. So develop a lot of mindfulness and sit in meditation to bring the mind to become still. Then the mind will become neutral, will become ubeka. No love, no hate, no fear, no delusion. That is, that is when the mind doesn't move at all, right? Doesn't move to yeah. react at all. Doesn't think, just, just just, uh, just aware, just know. Just aware. Yeah. Just know what's going on, but not reacting yeah. emotionally. Tanajan, yeah. yeah. mm. <coughs> kindly correct me if I am wrong in this statement. One who has destroyed the three lower fetters in this birth, when he takes up another set of Nama Rupa, that Nama will be devoid of these three fetters? That's right, because the fetters, they, they, they were in the mind and it, they have been er eradicated. So there will be no these three fetters anymore for that particular mind. But the other seven fetters still Wait remain. Me. And so he will then tackle the other fetters on his next, next life. Or if, if it's not next life, it's this life. Once you have got rid of your first three fetters, then you move on to the next two. Uh, one more question. The Anagami still has the Rupa Raga and Narupa Raga. Does this refer to the Rupa Janas and Arupa Janas, or does this refer to the Rupa Brahma worlds and the Arupa Brahma worlds? Both, they, they, are the, they are the same thing. Arupa Jana, Arupa Jana is the result of the mind that has eradicated the Kamaraka, the sensual desire. 
once the mind is rid of the sensual desire, the mind will become calm on the level of rupa jhana and arupa jhana. And should the person die at that time, then the mind will be in the rupa world, arupa world. A person who has developed the jhanas, can he escape if he is, if he does not uh, destroy the three lower fetters in this birth itself, can he escape the birth in a Brahma world? If you still, uh, if you cannot get rid of your, the first three fetters, you will still be stuck with the body. So you, you cannot escape from the, the gamma, the sensual sphere of existence. You still have to return as a human being or animal. So, uh, no, this is as far as Bhattu has developed the uh, jhanas, has, has he, the, if this is sort of, he is to be born in the Bhattu world? I repeat your question again. Say a person who has developed the jhanas, say somebody who has say, gone up to the fourth jhana in this birth, mm -hmm. but he is yet not has destroyed the three lower fetters. He hasn't destroyed any fetters at and, all. Yes, he has not destroyed the... He might uh, suppress them temporarily yeah. by, so, by the strength of mindfulness. Yes. So, is he destined to be born in the Brahma world or can he avoid being born in the Brahma world? No, you will... Not, he will... Once, once he is born in the Brahma world, then after that he will come down and be born in the Deva world. And then after that, he'll come down and be reborn as a human. Yeah. So, th in other words, there is no escape from not being born in the Brahman world unless you have destroyed the three lower fetters. No, in order to escape from that Brahman world, you have to be the, you have to, you have to get rid of all the ten fetters. So, so even though you have destroyed the three lower fetters, yet that result will occur. You still have to be reborn and as a human being because you still have this sexual desire. But once you have got rid the, of the other two fetters, which is the sexual desire, mm -hmm. yeah, then. Yeah, then you will not be reborn in the, in the sensual sphere of existence. Mm -hmm. But you will have be born in the Brahma world mm -hmm. because you still attached to Rupa Jhana mm -hmm. and Arupa Jhana. If you want to be free from the Brahma world, then you have to let go of your attachment to the Rupa Jhana and Arupa Jhana. Then you will become a, a fully enlightened Arahant. Then you will be in Nibbana instead. And so you won't come back into any sphere of existence. Rupa, Arupa or Gama. Thank you, Tahanajan. Venerable sir, very simple question. If somebody wants to start as a novice, a new person, is there any recommended time for continuing meditation or it's up to you to decide how long you should do? Well, basically you have to know how much you can do. You have to know the strength. It's like when you first start jogging, you have to know how, how far can you run, right? So you run as much as, as far as you can. You're starting from there. And then try to increase the, the length of, of the distance that you're going to run. And the time, the interval or the, the you know, how many times you're going to run up per day, for instance. And how far you want to run. It depends on your, your strength. It depends on your, the time availability. It's the same way with meditation. You can sit for as long as you can. You cannot sit any longer than that because it depends on the strength of your mindfulness. The stronger your mindfulness, the longer you will be able to sit. Why the time to sit, it depends on the availability of your time. How much free time do you have? Before starting meditations, is it customary or is it the best to 
worship the Buddha first and take you can, refuge. You don't have to. Actually, the 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 best way, the the most benef- beneficial way to start before you start a meditation is to k- keep developing mindfulness, because this is what you you need to have when you meditate. If you have no mindfulness, you, your mind will become restless and agitated, and you will not be able to sit for long. So the actual way to, to worship the Buddha is to develop mindfulness. The Buddha said, Patibhat Bhusha. He said, you should worship me by developing the Dhamma practice. The next question, is there any particular so-called best time to uh, start your meditation, or is it anything convenient to you? It, when it's convenient to you, but the mind has different uh, level of activities. Yeah. If you meditate before you go to sleep, you'll find it harder than after you wake up, because after you wake up, the mind has rested, and then it's, it's, it is not as active like before you go to sleep. Before you go to sleep, the mind has been working all day long, so it has accumulated of a lot of action, a lot of memory, a lot of thoughts. So it takes a long time to, to, to clear it out. But after you go to sleep, all these thoughts and activity has been more or less cleared out. So when you wake up, you feel more empty. Your mind is a lot more empty and a lot easier to meditate. But you should not just De- de- rely on this condition of the mind, because ideally you should be able, you should try to develop, or uh, you should meditate all the time, yeah. whether it's easy or hard, it doesn't matter, because if you do it a lot and eventually, if you have, as your mindfulness becomes stronger and stronger, you can meditate any time. It will make no no difference which time you meditate. A follow up question. Um, is it better to be empty stomach than with food when you start meditating? Definitely, because when you have a full stomach, you feel sleepy. When you sit, you go to sleep. So, if it's possible, it's, the Buddha says you have to have moderation in eating. Yeah. Like keeping the eight precepts will uh, prevent you from eating after midday. But this is something that someone who is more <coughs> serious meditator do. But if you're just a casual meditator who wants to meditate on your free time, then you, you cannot keep the eight precepts. Yeah. Eight precepts are for people who want to constrain, concentrate all their time for meditation. People who are not working, for instance. But if you're working, yeah, you, have to, you have to eat, you know, so because you, you need the energy. And also, you, you, you might be tempted because you, you are close to this food. You see other people eating and you, you, you can't help yourself wanting to eat with them. Thank you, sir. Okay. I think... Okay. Uh, hold up. Take some more. Yeah. No, I just want to comment. I think for a person, <coughs> a working person, the best time to meditate is as soon as he gets up and also after he comes back, comes home after work, but before taking dinner. Any time, yeah. yeah. At least that that was my experience. Okay, but sometimes before dinner you might keep thinking about food (laughs) because you're hungry. (laughs) Uh, Not not really, if you if you are uh, if you are hungry for the Dhamma. Okay, yeah. (laughs) I have noticed that. Yeah. If you are hungry but ideally, you should be able to practice any time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. any, t- any free time you have, try to meditate. Yeah. But th- it might be easier or harder depending on the condition of the mind. And, and if you miss that chance, you feel as if you have missed something very important. Right, because meditating is like eating food, food for, the mind. for the mind. Food for the mind. Okay. You can ask all the questions you ha- you have because you know you they're leaving tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, when we say we keep the five precepts, 
do you real like you think you are keeping the five precepts are we really keeping the five precepts is it by thoughts also that you are you have to keep all the five precepts well the five precepts start with your thought firstly before you can uh, break the precept you have to think of breaking it first like you, you see a mosquito and you want to get rid of that mosquito you think firstly so if you're mindful that you know that ah I'm, I'm going to kill this mosquito, but I'm keeping the five precepts, so I must not do it. So, so if you have mindfulness, it will be easier for you to keep the five precepts. Because sometimes your, your natural reaction is quicker than, than your mindfulness. When a mosquito touches your body, you already slap it before you realize, oh, I'm supposed to be keeping the five precepts. You know? mm. So you, have to, you should try to develop mindfulness because the more mindfulness you have the easier for you to keep the five precepts because before you can do you have to think first before you can say anything you have to think first and if you have mindfulness then you then you can watch what you think see without mindfulness you will not be able to see what you think what you think so you should try to develop mindfulness then you'll find keeping the five precepts very easy because you you watch you keep watch at the starting point see the starting point is the mind first the mind has to think then it directs the the action to the the body or to the the mouth to speak understand okay anybody else Mm -hmm. so, I, no, we can ask tomorrow. So you go here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I guess it. I, if it, I'm trying to ask a question. I do not know whether you will answer this or not. <laughs> uh, Hajan Tanajan Mahabhuva says, when he destroyed Avijja, it ended up in a violent reaction in the body, together where he felt the world turned upside down. Yes. Now, my question is, is this something common to all who destroy Avijja, or can this be uh, can this vary according to the individual? I'm not sure because I, I haven't made any uh, what you call research. I didn't go and ask everybody how how how, how it happened to each individual. But you can you can you you you'll find that it's a it's a life changing experience. Let's put it that way. It starts with the 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 samadhi level. You know, when your mind first enter into Pujana, the mind is like completely flip over, you know, from totally, from very wobbling, of, from very uh, agitated to become perf perfectly still. You know. So it's something that is a remarkable experience. So I, I'm pretty sure that when this, this final moment, I think it, it must be something very... Uh, Earth-shattering experience. Yeah. So, in other words, this state comes only at a jhanic level. Yeah, at the mind level. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to go into jhana or you have to get rid of your fetters. That's when you will experience it. Even the first three fetters, you experience something yeah, remarkable. Yeah, yeah. And the next level, the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, there's, there's three levels, actually. Do you... Do you uh, do you have to go to the jhanas to even to destroy the lower fetters? Yes. No, you need the jhana to help you fight with the the, the fetters. Without the jhana, you don't have the strength to 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 suppress or to eliminate it. So you need to first to have jhana, have mindfulness, have ubeka. 
then you can resist the 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 the, the cravings that cause you to become attached to the fetters. Yeah. But so, that, uh, no. that but that uh, moment, path moment, you are. Nevea, uh, ne you are not unaware of that path moment, but only thing is that you know something has happened to you. No, you know, you know, you know. You're you, you're you're trying to 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 co contemplate, to investigate the nature of the body, see? Okay. but uh, the nature of the kanda. So when you see it to be anicang dukkang anatta, mm -hmm. then you can let go of it. Mm -hmm. When you let go of it, there'll, 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 there'll be this feeling of, uh, what you call, uh, deliverance from mm -hmm. something heavy that you've been carrying okay. in your mind. Other than that, you will never know or remember that path moment. Because, because you are not there when you experience that path moment. You are there, the mind, you are the mind, you know it, and you, it will always remain in your memory for the rest of your life. You'll never forget it. Because the awareness is there. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it happened long, long time ago, it yeah. is very sharp yeah. in your mind, as right. if it happened yesterday. Right. See, mm. someone asked the Buddha or somebody about whether the Arahan can forget something or not. And the answer is yes, you can forget names, you can get, forget places, time. But, was, yeah. but is there anything that an Arahant doesn't forget? And the Buddha say the Four Noble Truths. He will never forget this, the Four Noble Truths. The moment when the, the, the path and the, and the fruit happen, this is in the Four Noble Truths. So he'll never forget. forget the no Alzheimer can eliminate this this, this, this knowledge from the mind of an arahant. And you can always recall it as if it happened yesterday. Yeah, it's, mm. it's, it's right now, it's happening <laughs> right now. Yeah, yeah. He, it's here yeah, now, yeah, right it's now. not yesterday yeah, or tomorrow. Right, right now. Yeah. Dhamma is here now, agaliko. Agaliko, oh, yeah. Right. Um, when, sir, you mentioned that uh, Anapanasati Bhavana is the easiest because the breathing is always available. But can somebody start Vipassana Bhavana without going to practicing uh, Anapanasati Bhavana? Well, theoretically, you won't be able to go into Vipassana if your mind is still under influence of your defilement. Your mind will be directed by your defilement to go think about. Uh, uh, about your cravings more than about getting rid of your cravings. See? Instead of thinking that everything is impermanent, your mind will be directed to think that everything is permanent. Instead of thinking about everything is being bad for you, is suffering or dukkha, you think everything is good for you, it will give you happiness. See? So you cannot, you cannot think in, in, in terms of vipassana, without first suppressing your defilement. See. And in order to suppress your defilement, you need to have strong mindfulness to the level in which you can bring it to jhana. Once you have entered into jhana, then you will, ha you will suppress the, your defilement temporarily. So it will not then distract you, you from looking at the truth, looking at the three characteristics of existence. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. I think that idea comes because uh, people tend to divide vipassana uh, samanta bhavana and vipassana bhavana. But the point is that it is just like if you hold a connex lens to the rays, uh, to the sun's rays, you can concentrate those those rays to a point where you can even burn a piece of cotton. Mm -hmm. So similarly, I think the samanta is to bring your mind and focus your mind to a certain point. Uh -huh. Because if the mind is going all over the place, right. you will never be able to focus it. Well, I can give you an example. The mind is like your glasses that you put on. Yeah. If it's cloudy, if it's dirty, you won't be able to see things clearly. So first you have to clean the glasses first, to wipe the, all the 
the cloudy stuff away from your, your, your glasses so you can see clearly. The mind without jhana is like the mind being overclouded by defilement, by delusion. See? So it will not be able to look things as they are. They will not be able to see that thing, everything is anichang, dukkhang, anatta. It will see the opposite. See? But once you have jhana, then you, when you tell the mind to see as anichang, dukkhang, anatta, it will see it just as you tell it to see. Then when you see that it's anichang, dukkhang, anatta, then you can get rid of it. See? Get rid of your attachment to it. And the, and the two cannot be separated either, samatha and vipassana. So the, they sort of occur almost sort of together. Because Ajahn Chah Cha gives that explanation, when you lift a stick, you are lifting both ends of the, the stick at the same time. When you use them, eventually you, 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 you use them together. together. But when you first develop, you have to develop them separately. Lift yeah. one end up at, at the beginning. Right. Mm -hmm. like, it's like your two hands. You have to learn to use your left hand first, then you learn how to use your right hand. Then Once you know how to use them both, then you, then you can use them to do whatever you want to do. Okay. Now, uh, uh, we have to suppress the, the five hindrances to go into a jhana. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we have to do that in our daily life too, right? Yes. It, well, if you consider your daily life as part of your practice, then you have to do it. But if you don't consider it as part of your practice, then you might not want to do it. Yeah. You still might want to watch movies, eat. listen to music, or eat. Yeah. You eat to the yeah. the most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> but if you, say, if you become a serious meditator, then you say, I have to get rid of all these hindrances. Yeah. Yeah. And would you consider that in that five hindrances, the, uh, uh, the doubt Vichikicca should is one of the very important factors that you have to suppress. Yeah, because if you don't, if you doubt your practice will bring you any yes, result, sir. then you mm -hmm. won't do it. Right? Yes, so you have to have faith in your practice, you say, because the Buddha has proven that this practice will bring you good result. So you need to listen to a lot of Dhamma talks from the Buddha to get the encouragement, to get, to get rid of your doubt. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you always say to use Buddha or Buddha as a guide to keep your mind mindful, but I have got used to saying Namo, uh, Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sam Buddha. Is it too many words? No, to no, it's okay. It's okay. For, for, for different people, some people like one word, some people like many words. So it's, it's the same thing. The goal is to prevent you from thinking yeah. about other things, that's all. Yeah. Or you can even say, Buddha, uh, Dhamma, Sangha, Namaswami. Okay. Yes. Or you don't have to even say anything if you yeah. can yes, focus on, on your action. Mm. If you can keep watch your movement, your body movement, mm. and, not, and not let your mind go think about other things, this is also another way. I say something only, only when I'm just sitting down and waiting. Okay. So there are many ways to develop mindfulness. Forty ways, with forty kamatana. <laughs> so my next question, to reach a dhyanic stage, is there any particular length of time that you need to concentrate your mind and flowing all over the place? Is, you should keep in one place for a long length of time, any particular length of time. Can you Just, speak louder? I cannot hear. Uh, in, before reaching a dhyanic stage, if I, stand right, if I understand right, you have to keep your mind concentrated at right. one point. That's right. Now, does it depend upon person to person how long you have to be able to keep that mind in one place? It depends Before on you your mindfulness. Yeah. And depends how long you have been developing mindfulness. If you have been developing a long time, you can make your mind calm very easily, quickly. Some people can enter jhana in five minutes. The Buddha, when he was a young boy, he entered into jhana without, without having to meditate. He just sit alone under a tree by himself. Then his mind suddenly becomes still. 
So it could be a result of, somebody can do it very short time, it could be a result of what you had done in a previous birth. That's right, it depends on the previous birth, how much, how much mindfulness you already had developed and the, the opportunity for that mindfulness to take effect. See, for the mindfulness jhana to take effect, first you have to be alone. If you're around people, your mind is being distracted by other people. So it cannot go into jhana. But if you're suddenly left alone and have nothing to distract you, then if you have strong mindfulness, it can enter into jhana automatically, without even you telling it to do so. And if you have that past practice, even in the first sitting, when you're sitting for the first That's time, right. Uh, to meditate, mm -hmm. you can re go to that level, jadic level. That's right, that's right. So, try to develop mindfulness. Right. That's the, the Buddha said mindfulness is the most important Dharma. He compares the mindfulness as to the elephant footprint. It's, it's bigger than all the uh, footprints all the, of all the other the elements, animals, and animals in, the, in the forest. So if you want to advance in your Dharma practice, you have to start with mindfulness. Mm -hmm. My example, of the importance of mindfulness is, is like a key to your automobile. If you cannot find your key to your automobile, you cannot drive your car, you cannot go anywhere. But once you have the car, the key, then you can get into the automobile, then you can start the automobile, and then you can drive it anywhere you want. So, if you have mindfulness, then you'll have samadhi. Yeah. Once you have samadhi, then you can apply vipassana or, or panya to suppress, to eliminate all of your cravings. Then you will have magga nibbana coming right after. Mindfulness is the weapon to burn all defilement. Mm -hmm. Sati. sati. In, in Pala, it's called yeah. sati. Yeah. And panya is wisdom. There are reported incidents of y very young children who are able to recite sutta without learning or without any kind of practice. How is that it's possible? Because they have developed their ability from past lives. Yes. See, like the Buddha, when he was born, he could walk seven steps. That's how strong his mindfulness is. His, his mind can direct the body to walk as soon as he is born. That's the strength of the mindfulness. But and then... Lose it all, no, no you don't lose it, but, you, but you, then, you just don't use it, that's all, because other people come and, and yeah, help for you, so you don't really have to use your mindfulness. This use atrophy. Mm. <laughs> it re does it really atrophy as such, or the, per the person who is able to do that, apparently, or what I heard is that they, have, they are not able to do it anymore at a subsequent stage, or subsequent number of years has passed by. Is it true? I'm not sure, maybe... I think, I think it is referring to, uh, maybe, that there is, there was a, uh, a child, a long time ago, there was a child who was born in Sri Lanka, and this child, at the age of two or three, would go into, into the meditative post, and, and he can recite the Mahamangala uh, Sutra, Ratana Sutra, uh, and uh, few other sutras. And, uh, and he was able to do that. He, he says, when I sit, it just comes pouring to me. But that with age, he got married and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Now those things are no longer happening there to him. But yet he has a certain amount of Wanting the meditation. It's possible because <coughs> there are memories like like if you used to be able to recite the, the remember the multiplication table for instance. If you stop using it for a long time, then you might forget <coughs> it. You know. But if you try to recite it again, you might it might come back very easily. It's just like if you don't walk for mm. six months and so on. This is memory, see. It, it, it is not like wisdom. Wisdom you don't forget. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the, about the Jataka stories, uh, what do you think about this Jataka story? Uh, this is all related to Buddha's past lives? 
the Jakarta. Yeah, yeah, Jak yeah, yeah, yeah. This his past ten lives. So they are, they are, they yeah. are real, no? Yeah, he told he told this story himself. He told the story himself. Yeah. Yeah, but some people uh, say no. There's no. There was no Jataka stories. No, they are the, all made up. No, no, no. This is true. Like uh, each life, how he developed each perfection or paramis, yeah. the ten paramis. Yeah. <coughs> okay. People are like blind. Have you heard the story of five blind men who? Who touch the the body of the elephant at their different parts, so they have different interpretation of the elephant. See, one who touched the tail will say, "Oh, the elephant is like a rope." You know? Someone who touched the trunk, uh, you think this is like a snake. You know? Someone who touched the what you call yeah. the ivory, the tusk, they they call it, it's like a spear. You know? And someone who touched the stomach of the elephant, they say, oh, it's like a, a wall, you know. They're all true, you know, but they don't see the full picture. You know? So they only, uh, what you call, just speculate. But if you practice the Dhamma, and you experience the Dhamma in your heart, then you, you understand exactly what the, the teaching of the Buddha, and you will have no doubt at all of all these teachings, you know. If, if, if they were not true, they would have been uh, eliminated a long time ago. Yeah. But they support all the other parts of the, of the teaching. But why aren't they not included in the Sutra Pitaka or the Vinaya Pitaka? This is, this is a matter of uh, classification that comes up afterwards. See? During the time of the Buddha, he didn't say, put this in this classification or this. This has only been arranged afterward to make it easier to, to, to look after, to go after. But don't worry too much about these things. All you have to worry about is to develop mindfulness and get rid of your defilements. Once you have got rid of this, it doesn't matter whether they are true or not. Yeah. Okay? Uh, this may be a question that I may answered before for my knowledge. Why did Buddha say that a female can never attain Buddhahood? He never said that. Did he say that? I don't know. I don't know. No, everybody is possible, is, has the capability to attain Buddhahood. No, uh, let's, let me put the question in another form. Can a female person become a Buddha? Become a Buddha in the same birth? Mm. I don't know. I never heard of it. But theoretically, it's possible because a female mind is not different from a, uh, a male mind, and all they need is the ability to be, to have the ten perfection. To be. Uh, so. It is only because in this culture we have not had a female Buddha. That's right. So far, there was no uh -huh. female Buddha. So there is no discrimination whatsoever. No, because we have female Arahan, right? Yeah. So female Arahan is not different from female. Buddha. Buddha. Arahan and Buddha are the same. They have pure mind. They have got rid of all their defilements. See? All they need to have is sila, samadhi, and panya. Mechi. Mechi kao. You said it is mechi, wrong. Mechi. Yeah. Kut, is it? K-W-A-I. Uh -huh. Mechi kwai. Mechi kwai. Mechi kao. Mechi kao. She's the disciple of Ajahn Man, see. On the same basis, it is said that Buddha will be born only in India. No, so, no. That's because, also not true. Because India is just a, a place that maybe a thousand years from now, maybe may be there. the new Buddha might not be born in this world because this will probably be disintegrated already. It might, but there are other planets like the Earth, and with that, there are people like us, and there will be new Buddha. But it's a long, long time before another one will appear. I guess. Okay. You have all your questions answered for today. I hope you learned something from your trip here. and.
apply it in your practice yeah. so that you can develop your mind to a higher state and eventually maybe become enlightened one day. Okay? All right. So I have now, I will now switch to my tie, okay? All right.